Hello and welcome to Angry Tennis Ball Calculation, starring Mr. Quinn. Hey guys, here I am, Mr. Quinn, in your computer. Ooh. Uh, I thought you could use a little hand working on our project, so I'm going to help out by doing an example of it for you. Now, the very first thing you need to do for your calculations is work on just making a diagram. This is a nice place to start to get a picture for what's going on. Here's my picture. Hold on. Okay. Here's my launcher. And the ball goes like that. So far, so good. There's a few things I want to see in this picture. Number one, I want to know what direction it's going when it starts. That's pretty easy. Right like this. That's how your launcher really fires. So that's the actual original velocity of the ball. Let's call it VO. Now, your launcher didn't fire straight up. It also didn't fire straight over. It was at some angle in between. I don't know what yet. Let's call that theta. Well, now what I want to do is figure out how far it actually went. Well. When we talk about range, we just mean this way. I don't really care how high it went. I just want to know how far over. So let's label that. I'm going to call this delta x. One thing I do want to know is how high up it was at its maximum point. Well, if you look at this picture, it's really easy to see that the maximum height takes place right here. So let's call this delta y max. Now, there's two other things I wanted to put on there. And I'm going to draw another little picture next to this. Uh, we asked for vo and theta. But then again I asked for vox and voy. Well, this is what your launcher actually does. But it's hard to work with that. So instead, let's break it into pieces. We use the basketball in class to show that throwing it like this is the same thing as walking and throwing it up. In fact, if I go below the screen and throw it, you can't tell if I'm walking or throwing, throwing it up or throwing it on an angle. All you see is the arc it takes. So let's take this problem where your ball flies all the way over and pretend that you are running across the field and throwing your tennis ball straight up. It makes it easier and we like that. So let's draw this little part again but I'm going to put it over here and call this big line V O. We're going to break it into two pieces. An X piece called V X and a Y piece called V-O-Y. And let's not forget that we have our angle right in here. This is the whole first part of your calculations. Having a nice diagram to point at everything that you worked on. We'll refer to this as we go along. Now let's get started with the problem. The first one being calculate V-O-Y. So, we are going to start with a given list. Since all I care about in my first calculation is VOY, I'm not even going to bother putting an X list. If I've only talked about the Y direction, the X direction has no effect on it, so I'll ignore it. My given list is going to have a few things. Number one, VOY, since that's the thing I'm concerned about. Now what? Well, if I'm talking about the Y direction, and for this problem, I'm pretending the ball went straight up and came straight down. There's a few other things we know. If it starts on the ground and ends on the ground, in the y direction, it doesn't really change its position. Its height at the beginning of the problem and the end of the problem is the same. So delta y, my change in my y placement is 0 meters. Now, we did make some measurements on your own project. We measured the range 
how far away it went, and also the total time it took to go from here to there. Now, the range, or delta x, does me no good in a y problem, but knowing the time might help. Let's put that down. Time, total. I'm going to add the total there just as a nice note for myself. Equals, this is where you'd start to put your data in. So since I'm going to use my data, I'm going to write it in a different color to make it stand out a little bit more. Uh, my time, because my launcher was, let's be honest, pretty sweet, was 72 seconds. It was in the air for a long time. Well, now what? I have VOY of velocity. I got delta Y of displacement. I have time. The only other type of information I don't have on here is acceleration. So even though I don't really know what I put down yet, let's throw that in my list. AY equals, and think about it. Well, in the Y direction, gravity takes hold. Gravity is always pulling down at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So I'm going to assume that my acceleration in the Y direction is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's not a bad given list. Let's see if we can do anything with it. The next step, let's try some formulas. My favorite formula I'm going to go with first. It's always a nice place to start out. Delta Y equals VOY times T plus one half AT squared. Let's see what I know. Let's see what I don't know. Delta y. I know it, but it's zero. So in this problem, it goes away. V O y. I don't know it. I'm going to put an x there. Time. I do know it. Check mark. Uh, A. I do know it. Check. And then time again, which I already knew. Check. Well, I only have one x, so it looks like I can solve this problem. Other formulas could probably help too, but there's no need to use them. I already have my endpoint. So, let's see what we can do. First things first. Since I have a zero there, let's write that again. E equals v o y times t plus one half a t squared. I'm trying to solve for v o y. That's what I really want. So how about if I box that to remind me that that's what I want to get by itself. Right now it's not divided by anything or it's not being, uh, it's not on the bottom of anything. So I want to keep it on this side. Let's move this whole term over to get it out of my way. Minus one half a t squared minus one half a t squared. These cancel out, and then this comes over this side. So negative one half a t squared equals v o y times t. Well, at this point, I see I got t squared on one side and t on the other. I can just cancel one out on each side by dividing by t. t T, this gets canceled, and then on this side, only one of my t's gets canceled, so I'll just get rid of the square. It turns out that on this problem, v o y equals negative one half a t. That's not my final answer, but I can plug and chug and get it. Don't forget to include your units, though. We are done part one of your calculations. Part two is still in the y uh, problem, so we don't need a separate given list. I'm just going to move over here a little bit. Part two asks for uh, delta y max. Delta y max equals question mark. That's what I'm trying to find. Well, if we look back at our diagram that we started out with, delta y max takes place right here. There's something special about that point. It's halfway through our problem. 
So even though I know the time it takes to get from the beginning and the end, or from the beginning to the end, here I'm only worried about half of that time. Everything on this side I can forget about. So I'm actually going to make a new given list because I think it will help me. Let's get this in here actually. So givens. And now I'm looking for delta y max or delta y up. Well, let's look at my original list to see if I have any of those. I started out before with v o y equals question mark. Well, on my new problem, I'm only looking at the up part of my problem. And I started with v o y again. But now I know it. So in this problem, and I didn't get the number yet, you can actually put V O Y in. I'll put a number sign to represent that I know it, even though I didn't get it yet. And since that's my data and not yours, it will be different for you, even if I did get the number in. The next thing we put down was delta Y. And the whole problem was zero because we started and ended at the same height. Now we start and end at different heights. So I can't put it as zero. I have my delta y max as a question mark. My time total is 72 seconds, but I'm not concerned about the total time anymore, just the time up. So I'm going to put time up in here, which is one half of my t total, which in this case is half of 72 seconds 36 seconds. And again, I'm using green because that's my number, not yours. You'll have a different answer. We have acceleration in the y direction. Well, that's going to be the same. That's still gravity. A g equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That might be helpful. Is there anything else? Well, this problem is a little different than that one. And on this problem, my endpoint, when I'm at the very top, when I throw a ball up for a moment, at the very top of it are, it's, are, it's not moving at all. So I know that its velocity at the top is zero. And in this problem, where I only go half the way, the top is actually the end of the problem. So I can say in this problem that VFY equals zero meters per second. Not a bad start to my given list. But doing your givens isn't enough. Now I need to find delta y max. Let's try my go-to formula again. Delta y equals, I think I'm going to run out of screen, so I'm going to move over and use this one again. We'll just recycle it. Delta y equals v o t plus 1 half a t squared. Let's see what we have this time. Uh, delta y. I don't have that. We'll give it an x. V o y. I do have that. We'll give it a check mark. Time. I do have that. You need to be very careful. If I'm talking about my delta y up or my delta y max, I have to use time up. If you use the wrong numbers, no good. I do have VOI, I do know my time up, I do know acceleration, and I do know my time up. Not only is it good to use, I don't even need to rearrange. Here I can plug and chug. I'm going to make another little clip for the next part of the video, uh, but I'm going to cut it out so I can erase this. What I'll do though is before I close it, I'll give you one zoom up to the board to check it out. Back again, let's look at the next parts of this project. We've already done the first part where we found VOY and we found delta Y max. The next part says calculate VO, VOX, and theta. This seems like it's going to be a lot of work. It's actually really simple. So let's pick the one that seems easiest first. To me, that would be VX. 
VO and theta both have to do with working on angles. That's something kind of new. So let's only worry about this for now. Rid of U, rid of U. Just like any other problem, start with a given list. VOX equals question mark in this problem. Now, since we're working with VOX and we're working in the X direction, we want to put things that have to do with the X direction in here. Well, one thing that we know from our diagram and from our data is delta X. You guys measure delta X. So did I. Now, my launcher was super incredible. So when I fired it, it actually went 2,486 meters. Not too shabby. I'm running in green again, so you know, these are my numbers. Anytime you see black, that means we should probably have the same thing. So I have delta x. VOX I'm not sure of. Well, I also know in the x direction, or really with no direction, time. Time works in every problem. Now my time from the first part and from my data is going to be the total time, beginning to end, to cover this entire delta x. In that case, it's 72 seconds. Now I have a displacement, a velocity, and a time. The one type of information I'm kind of missing right now is acceleration. So I'm going to write that down, not even knowing what it is, and think about it. To do the x problem, we're going to pretend that we are going to jump with the ball as it goes through. So it'll look something like this. Now for me, I saw something different than you. You saw the ball travel like this, whereas I saw the ball travel like this. It's a very simple problem. Now, and when the ball travels like this, it's going the same speed the whole time. Another way to say same speed or constant speed is no acceleration. So I know our acceleration in the x direction is nothing. Ax is 0 meters per second squared. Well, I have some things down. I got at least one piece of information in each category. Let's see if I can try a formula and see if it'll work. Uh, I'm going to use my go-to formula first because it usually does pretty good for me. So let's try it out. Delta x, because we're in the x direction now, equals vx times t plus one half ax t squared. Delta x, I know, so I give it a check mark. Vx, I don't know, that's what I'm looking for. Little x. T, I know, I measured that. A, I know, and in fact, A is zero, so I can just get rid of this. Easy peasy. Well, now I have a simple problem to solve. But I can't just plug and chug yet. I want V equals something. It doesn't look like that yet, so let's rearrange. Delta X equals V X times T. And if I divide both sides by T, I get V X equals Delta X over T. Problem is now done. I didn't plug and chug, but you can do that. I know delta x, I know t, it'll be very easy to get vx. Finished. Now for the next parts. Let's draw a little line over here to keep them separate. I wanted to know the vo, and I also wanted to know theta. Well, if you look back at our diagram to start out with, we said that vx and voy are really just another way of saying VO and theta. These two terms have a relationship with these two terms, and a relationship that we worked with before. First of all, if we want to get VO, we can very easily do it using my buddy from college's idea, Pythagoras. He said, if you know one side of a triangle and another side of a triangle, you always find the third side. That's what we have right now. 
In the first problem on your calculation sheet, we got VOY. And in the last problem, we got VX. If we know these two pieces, we can get the third. Let's do it real quick. VO squared equals VOY squared plus VX squared. I can fix this real easily to work for me. VO equals the square root of VOY squared plus VX squared. Very important when you do this step is to realize if I'm going to take the square root of this side, I have to take the square root of that whole side. We know VOY and we know VX, so we are now done. Plug and chug. Next. The last part, or at least of this problem, is solving for theta. This is the one thing that we've just learned in the past couple of days. We have to use some trig functions, which are no different than any formula we've worked with so far. Really, the only change is that it uses sine or cosine or inverse sine or inverse cosine, and we haven't seen those before. Doesn't matter. We want to solve for theta. Now, if we use sine, this function takes in an angle and spits out a number that represents an opposite over a hypotenuse. This doesn't do us much good because we know our opposite and hypotenuse and we don't know our angle. Our opposite in this case is VOY and our hypotenuse is VO, both of which we now have. But we can't get theta from sine. That's like your digestive system working backwards, which again, don't try. If we change this a little bit though, and we use a function like a sine inverse, instead of putting in an angle, we put in opposite over hypotenuse, and we get out an angle. This will work for us in this case. In fact, any of the inverse functions would work for us. Sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse. In this case, I would actually use tangent inverse because we started with these two numbers and calculated the hypotenuse. So let's try that out. Theta equals the tangent inverse of our opposite VOY over our adjacent VX. You don't need to rearrange, and all you need to do is plug and shove. You now have the angle. That finishes the first four parts of our problems. The last part is the exact same thing, but in reverse. What we're going to do in the last part is start out with the angle and with your VO. The only change is you're going to use the VO you actually calculated but you're going to pretend that your angle came out to 45 degrees. And we're going to work all the way in reverse to figure out what our delta x would have been and our delta y max would have been if we fired at this angle instead of the one you got. Some of you might find that when you solve for theta the first time, you have an angle close to 45 degrees. That will mean that your answers in the end will come out close. But a lot of you are going to find that your angle comes out to maybe 20 degrees or 70 degrees. And what we want to do is figure out if you went at that ideal angle of 45, how far you would have gone. I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to come find me. I'm always in in the morning, in in the afternoon, and then I'll also be able to answer emails. I'll see you guys in class. Bye.